Good morning, Stampers. Welcome to Learning with Friends. I'm Pat Fairless from Fairless Stamp and Flare. And today we're going to use embossing paste. And we're just going to have some fun trying different ways um, to use it. There's a lot of different ideas out there on using it. Uh, one of these I'm going to show you today, I've seen it done before. I had never done it, but a couple of them were actually new to me. So I'm going to show you three different ways. And then I'll show you a card made with each of them. So stick around um, and let's have some fun with the paste. So you don't need a lot of supplies um, for using embossing paste. Obviously you need embossing paste. And I have the shimmery white that I'm going to use. This comes packaged in a bag, and if you have this, I recommend that you leave it in the bag. I actually use, put this then inside of a, like a plastic tub so it's sealed because this stuff is, does have a tendency, it will dry out. Um, so you want to keep it sealed as much as you can. The, I would also leave this foil in place. Um, and when I'm not using it, I'm going to put my cover back on just to try to keep it as good as I can for as long as I can. Um, but this is what it looks like. So you need some embossing paste. You need something to spread the paste around. And Stampin' Up! has these palette knives. They come in a pack of three. And um, all three are a little bit different. Use whichever one you like. Whatever works best for you doesn't doesn't matter at all. I tend to like this one because it just has a, like, this nice angle for spreading it. So I'm going to just get the other ones out of my way. And then you don't need an, a mask, some sort of a mask, but today we're going to use masks on each one of these. And I'm using masks from the Artistic Mix Decorative Masks. Mat, masks? Can't talk this morning. Um, these are on the last chance list. And when I looked in the new catalog, I did not see any new ones other than the layering ones, which are a lot of fun. Um, but I've never honestly tried um, the layering masks with embossing paste. I'm not sure how that would work. Maybe on the last layer. Um, now, what I like to do, and these are just kind of some hints, I like to adhere this down to some kind of a surface so it doesn't move around as I'm working on it. And then I take my mask and, and I've just got this little inexpensive clipboard here that I, I don't even know where I bought it. Um, probably an office supply store, it's just plastic. So if I get ink or paste on it, it doesn't really matter. Now, what I try to do is I try to center the mask so that it looks the same on each side approximately and the same on the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna move it till I get to something like that or close to it. I'll be honest with this particular one, it doesn't matter a lot because um, I am starting with a five and a half by four and a quarter, quarter sheet of paper, which is what I usually do and um, I then trim it down and that just then if you don't get the edges done so great then it doesn't matter you can trim it off. Now I like to take my mask and actually adhere it with some low tech tape. So I'm going to put this on here just on the top and bottom will work. You could probably just use the top and then we are going to start spreading our paste and we're just going to put a thin, thin layer. Um, this is watercolor paper by the way because after this embossing paste dries, we are going to watercolor it. And that's what's a little bit different about um, this particular technique. So just pick up a little bit. It's surprising how little you need um, to cover a whole sheet of paper. You would think it would quite require quite a bit, but it, it really doesn't. Um, just add a little bit at a time until you're sure you can go both directions if you want just to make sure you've got it on both so it's just not all building up on one corner um, 
It is harder to see, I have to tell you, with these lights than it is in my normal work spot. So I might have to take a little bit of extra time just to check out and make sure I have this all covered. The nice thing about having it on this clipboard, I can pick up the clipboard too and move it around without worrying about um, losing or the, the mask moving around on your on your cardstock because that's that's kind of the most important thing um, is to make sure it doesn't move so that you get consistent um, thickness. And, and honestly, don't worry too much about the consistency of the thickness. It, it is not 100% critical. That's probably just a me thing. I, I like it to be consistent, at least for this technique. Now, I have made some things where I use it to try to make it look like snow, so then it is very inconsistent. And I just take probably a spatula like this, and I just kind of smear it on in waves. You can do that with waves or um, snow, whatever you'd like to add some texture. So that is that. Now we have to let this dry. Now the one thing I do want to point out is when you are finished with your spatula, be sure to clean it right away in some warm soapy water. Um, I have a little container of water next to me here so that I can clean this off. If you leave, and I, I just washed it in soapy water, and I'm going to wipe it with this rag. Um, and now I'm going to remove it from this, because that's the other thing, is you definitely want to clean your mask as soon as you are finished um, using it. So we're going to carefully lift it up. And I'm going to lay this in that soapy water. I made the mistake one time of letting it just dry on there. And then thinking I could pull it off. Number one, it doesn't pull off very well when it's dry. But the thing that was even worse was trying to get the dried embossing paste off from the mask. So be sure you put that in clean, soapy water. Now, if I'm smart, I probably would wipe this off where it extended past. I am going to leave it right on my um, thing here, but I will wipe a bit of this off. Like I said, I'm trimming this one down. It's not a big deal. I did get some that dried on one of these clipboards. Um, and I could scrape it off with the razor blade, but it's best it's best if you can just wipe it off kind of quickly. Um, try not to let it dry because it doesn't. It dries and it dries hard. So it becomes very, very difficult to sometimes get that off. Now, I'm not too worried about this little plastic thing because, like I said, I can scrape it off with a razor blade and it came off fine. So I'm going to set this aside to dry. Um, it has lots and lots of shimmer with this shimmery embossing paste. If you can, when you let it dry, if there's a way to flatten it out, because it will curl. Um, if you have something to set on the edges, I may just take this and tape it back down just slightly. Um, or I can take my tape here and or my clipboard and I can just put a little adhesive down on here and press this on there. Now I don't want to touch it in the middle if I can help it. And it may or may not stay, but that'll help it stay a little bit flatter. So I'm going to set this side to dry. I hope it dries. Um, it dries fairly quickly, so we'll let that one dry and then come back and watercolor it once it's dry. So the next technique I'm going to show you, I'm going to use another mask from Artistic Mix Mask. So this one is like little flowers. So this one I've already 
attached to my clipboard. Um, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a thin layer on here, just like I did with the other one. And we will then set it aside to dry. And then we will actually, before we set it aside to dry, we're going to put some embossing powder on it. And once it's dry, then we're going to heat emboss it. So let's go ahead and wipe this on here. I like butter and cheese toast, I guess. This is the, the paste is soft and very easy to spread. It's not like butter you've taken out of the refrigerator. It's very, very quick and easy to, to spread it on here. And I just kind of like to work in little areas. Glob some on first, kind of thick, and then go back. I found it works best for me. Go back and just kind of scrape it off. This is why I like this particular palette knife, because it's easy to... It works well to, to scrape it flat. Okay. So that's that one. And I'm going to put my cover back on there and just to try to make sure it doesn't dry out. Clean my spatula. To make sure that doesn't dry hard. Like I said, it is, if you don't clean them, it is hard to get it off. You have to, you have to have something sharp to scrape it off. With. So now this one, Let's carefully remove our mask. And let's go ahead, get that off from here. And I'm going to put that in the soapy water as well. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit. If you just let it set in soapy water, that's fine. It'll, um, It won't harden when it's sitting in the water. So you can see, here's this one. It's got the embossing paste and it shimmers. But now we're gonna do something a little bit different. And I'm going to put three different colors of embossing powder on here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start with adding some, some gold first. Doesn't really matter. Um, the order, and we're just going to put it on a portion of this. Sprinkle a fair amount on there, and then we're going to dump it off. Give it a good tap on the back. Can you see that? So then let's go ahead and use some, what do we got next here? That's silver. So I'm going to make a little suction in the middle with silver. And I'll be honest, once you heat emboss this, my favorite one was the silver because the shimmer from the um, shimmery white embossing paper seemed to, to shine through. And you could see the iridescence from the shimmer. But it was fun to do all three just to see what they look like. So there's that. And then I'm going to put a little down here. Probably got a little more silver than I than I needed to, but like I said, it was my favorite. <laughs> so I probably had to carry it away. But then let's go ahead and just add some of this down. This is copper. And we will add this down at the bottom. And you can see I'm handling this very carefully by the edges because this embossing paste is still wet and would smear. It's another good reason I like to make it a little bit larger. This is also a quarter sheet of paper, five and a half by four and a quarter, because then if I do mess up the edges in my handling, and you can see down here I didn't get some paste as much as, as maybe I would have liked, but that's all right, because it'll get trimmed down and there will be no problems. So I'm going to find another place to set this one aside to dry. That one is our regular basic white Hard start. Um, the first one I did on watercolor paper, and, and that one and this next one are on just basic white card stuff. 
So then the third technique we're going to do, or the third way we're going to do this, and I hope these are drying so I can complete them for you. Um, this is another dye or mask from the artistic mix. This is the technique I had seen previously, and we are going to use reinkers to color it before we put it on our on our cardstock. So I am going to, and this one I'm going to put it on. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm kind of going to give it a little bit more of just an organic shapes. Um, I'm not going to cover the whole cardstock, but we're going to cover. We're going to color this. So I'm just going to put a little dab on there. That probably is way more than I need. So let's put a little bit back. We can always make more. Cover that back up so it doesn't dry out. Now I'm going to use Boho Blue and Wild Wheat. So let's, I'm just going to add one little drop, if I can get just one to come out. In fact, I think I will add it to the side. Because this does, it, it will lighten um, when you mix in the paste, but it, if you add too much, it might get darker than you want. So this way I can control it a little bit better. You can always add more paste to lighten it up if you need to. And I think this is plenty dark. But we're going to use it. So now, like I said, I'm just going to add this kind of randomly on here. I'm not going to put everything covered. And I will scrape so that it's fairly evenly thick, I would say. And then let's just add a little bit down here. Just looks like a splotch, right? So let me clean off my blue. Grab some more paper towel. And we will do the second color. So I'm just going to take the clean spot so I don't get blue mixed in here. And let's just grab a little bit more. I hate to have it left over because then I feel like I'm wasting it, right? And I stretch my little jar of paste as far as I can. It does last a long time. Just don't let it, don't buy it and not use it because it does go dry out. I've had that happen to me. So I learned the hard way that I basically ended up throwing a good portion of it away because it, it got hard. There we go. So let's mix this wild wheat in here. I don't know if I thought that was a really little double dog drop of, of ink. But you can see how much it it doesn't take much, right? It's got plenty of color. Mix it in good. And then we're gonna just add a little bit. Of this kind of the same way, not worrying about covering it all. We're just going to kind of make a couple splotches so it looks, I would say, organic. And this card, now we will just let this dry, and there's nothing more to do on the background. So we will just, I will show you this card first, and then we'll work backwards to see if the others are dry. If they're not, I can probably, okay. I need to quit. I'm, I'm losing my organicness by continuing to play with it. So this also, your silicone mat, things don't stick to it. Um, but I do like to get most of it off rather than just 
put that down my drain. So we'll just wipe as much of the off as we can. And then I will toss that in the soapy water. Clean this in the soapy water. That's probably the most important hint I can give you about working with embossing paste. Is clean your tools and clean them, clean them quickly and keep this well sealed so it doesn't dry up. So all right, let's remove this one. My little little tape, tape off. Isn't that cool? I like that one. This one, this one probably is one of my favorites. Um, how it turned out. So I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I will show you that card. So this is the card I made using that. You can see I've got a lot of white left up here once I turn things off. Um, actually down here. That was upside down. Okay. This is made with the Notes of Nature stamp set, which is on the, sadly, on the last chance list. That was one of my favorites in the little mini catalog. So I'm sad to see it go. Um, I don't have a lot of stamp sets like this. It's kind of a collage of things. So that is that card. Isn't that pretty? Can you see the shimmer? Let me bring it in closer on that shimmery. It really does shimmer in real life. And then the inside, I just stamped some of the leaves from Notes of Nature, and I did the same on the envelope. So let me set that aside, and I am going to take, let's go and check this out. This is the one we are going to emboss. It feels fairly dry, but just for grants, I'm going to put this on the heat tool. I'm going to heat the block a little bit and clean up my workspace and I'm so very well that I no longer need. Okay, that's all over the floor, but that's all right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to dry this a little bit from the back. I just want to make sure that the embossing piece is dry. I could have made oxygen and just have them already dried so you can see the next steps but it dries pretty quickly so let's go ahead and be in boxes it starts to turn it doesn't take long If you look closely, you can see the embossing paste just following just a tad. Um, it's probably not 100% dry. I would definitely recommend just setting it aside for a while and letting, making sure it is 100% dry. But it doesn't seem to be hurting anything. Silver seems to be bubbling the most. And honestly, it's really pretty when it does it. I'm sure you probably can't see it on the camera. But it's really pretty because that shimmer in that piece comes out. So there is the embossed 
embossing paste. Isn't that fun? Interesting. Just something a little different. I thought I had never seen this before. Um, so let me show you the card. And I just turned this into a birthday card. I this is the wanted to say um, dies. There is no stamping on this card, at least not on the no, no stamping at all. Amazing, right? Now, like I said, the silver you can see the shimmer through the silver um, more so than you can in the gold. Or this is the copper, and this is the gold on this particular card. If you look at an angle on these, then it really shows on the silver. It probably doesn't show on film. I can't really see it in the camera here, but in real life, you can see the shimmer come through the embossing base. I thought that was kind of fun. And I had a scrap where I cut it up, cut it down to size. So I just use that on the inside. On the envelope, I just use the mask and stamp. Or I think I use my blending brushes or dollars. I can't remember for sure which one I did. Doesn't both of them would work fine. So that is that card. Now let's take our first card and I'm gonna make sure it feels cool. Um which probably means it's not hundred percent dry. So let me just put a little heat on the back to see if it speeds up the drying just a tad. It is dry to the touch. And I'm going to try to show you the water coloring. Hopefully um, it is dry enough. I think it is. And putting that little bit of heat on the back and hold it flat while it's dry. Just it keep it fairly dry. I'm just feeling it to make sure if it's if it's cool to the touch, then I figure it's probably still a little wet. But you can see nothing's coming off other than some of the water or shimmer that's in the face. So I think that is fine. I am going to grab my, my clipboard here just so I keep my paper a little less inky. And I am going to use three colors for watercoloring this. I have my water painters. And I'm going to use, this is the medium-sized one that I'm going to be using. I have a little piece of paper towel to clean it with here. Now, you can use reinkers. Let's, let's start with the, um, the Coastal Cabana. And you can see I already have ink in here. So you can, you can do watercolor in one of two ways. You can use the cover. Um, you can add a drop of reinker in there. Or what also I like to do sometimes is just take an acrylic block and add some ink to it like that. And then we can wet this by squeezing a little bit from our water painter and picking up color. Now we're just going to take this and just kind of smear it on here. Okay, I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to add a little bit of a swoosh of color, I guess you would say. I do kind of want to make sure it gets down in the crevices because it builds up in there a little bit. Um, this is one of those, don't be afraid if you got too much water, seem like a little bit extra water. Um, help spread it on a little bit. Okay, so let me set the coastal clean aside. I should throw that in my little thing of water here. Let's see if we can get this color out of there. That's why I need my paper towel. I'm squeezing and just trying to get most of that color out as much as I can. And let's use Lemon Lowly for the next one. 
And this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a drop or two of her inker in my cover. You can you can squeeze your lid, but these um, these cases are my hands aren't strong enough to squeeze them. I don't know about yours. You might have a better grip than I do, but um, I find it very hard to squeeze. So I either use, use a reinker or use the blocks like I showed you. So we're just going to smear some yellow on here. This is lemon lolly. Such a pretty, fresh, cheery, cheery yellow, right? And if I squeeze while I'm doing it, then I get a little bit more water down in the crevices, which is kind of, kind of what I'm after. So that's good. Let's go ahead and squeeze some more water here and get this cleaned out. I saved the berry burst to last because for some reason red is hardest color. Reds or pinks are the hardest colors to clean out. All right, so this one I got a nice clean cover, so let's just ink up a block a little bit. And add some water. And you can add as much or as little water as you want. Obviously, the more you add, the lighter the color. Um, if you want it darker, just don't add a lot of water. I think I actually want it a little lighter. So I'm going to add some more water. I want it more pink than berry, I guess. Okay. And you can blend the colors together if you want. So that is that technique. This outer line. See what I mean about how it takes a little bit more squeezing and often I will just put this in, dip it in a cup of water or something to, to get the colors out. All right. Yeah, maybe before I lay the card in it. Because that would be my trick. All right, isn't that pretty? Make a beautiful background. Um, I hope the shimmer and shine shows up on the on the video. It's it's gorgeous in real life. But let me show you that card. Let me bring them all back in. So here's the card I made with that. Um, it's the same colors. I used a, a die cut. This is the, um, what is it called? Gothel Moments Hybrid Embossing Folder. So I took my brayer and a portion of the embossing folder on this side, I used Berry Burst, and then I brayered a little Coastal Cabana on there. I put those colors that way because it was kind of the opposite. I was, I was playing. playing. Oh, there I'm with my screen here. They put me back. Okay, this is becoming a weekly affair with this thing. Um, I keep saying they're working on it, but at least I saw it this time. Okay, and I got a good few of a couple of sequins on here. So that is that card. On the inside, I did not have enough of a scrap left to um, decorate the inside. So I just used my mask and my blending brush in the three colors, and I created that little strip on the inside, and then I also created a similar strip on the envelope. So it kind of ties it all together, right? So this one is the watercolor with, was with um, embossing paste. I did use watercolor paper because you can see I got it fairly wet. And here we did heat embossing, and I used three of the metallic embossing colors. Um, copper, silver, and gold. You could use any colors you have, obviously. And then this one here, this one was coloring the embossing paste. So that's the three ways I wanted to show you to use embossing paste today. Um, hopefully, hopefully you like that. And um, 
maybe saw something you hadn't seen before. I know I had seen this one a few times before. I had never tried it, um, but I had never seen these. So I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, let's go ahead and flip my camera back. Okay. Um, Let's hope StreamYard's done jumping around. But I and I hope you learned a little something, saw something maybe you hadn't seen before. If um, if you did and you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. And um, I'd love to see, I always love to see your comments. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you found me. And I hope you liked it and we'll come back again. If you would subscribe, that would be awesome. Um, but I love to have you watch and we love to learn together. So have a great day and a great rest of your week. And I will see you next week with something else.